volume of a cone. All right. So this week we've done quite a few volumes at this point. Um, I know there was a cylinder, a rectangular um, prism, a pyramid. So we've done volume of a whole bunch of different figures at this point. So now we're on cone. Um, all of these shapes have the same basic formula. Um, the only difference with a cone is that we do need to make sure it's volume equals one third base times height. I um, mean, this was the same thing for a pyramid. So you do base times height, then you have to make sure you divide it by three. And this has to do with if you had a cylinder, so, and I'm going to draw this really horrible here, but if you have a cylinder like this, um, and you can actually fill this in. So a cylinder is just base times height um, for the volume. And what this is saying is this cone would only fill up one third the same volume as the, the, the cylinder. And this is actually kind of one of those fun things that I like to do in class to show you where we actually fill it with water and things like that. It is kind of a, a neat experiment. And you can, I'm pretty sure you can look it up online or things like that. Maybe I'll make a video just so you can see it. Um, because it is kind of cool to actually see it happen when you see that um, you can pour this cone into the same cylinder three times and it fills the cylinder perfectly. And it doesn't quite look like that, but that's the way it works out. Um, same thing with a pyramid. Um, if you're talking about like a rectangular um, or a um, cube, um, sorry, a rectangular prism, I didn't finish that sentence. So anyway, um, the main thing we need to make sure is whenever we see capital B, capital B means the area of the base. So whatever the shape of the base is. In this case, the base is a circle. So we want to do pi r squared. A lot of the time they're asking us to do 3.14 for pi. And then in this case, they're asking us to round. Um, oh, it says do not do any rounding. So on one of the other ones I just um, went through, it wanted us to round to the nearest hole. This one says no rounding at all. So just leave it the way it is once you get done with your calculations. Um, so let me go over here. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff just because we don't really need the cylinder over the top of that. Okay, so if we know that the, there, it's this equation, then we can just simply plug things in. So we have volume equals one-third. Our base, instead of writing B, I'm going to write pi times R. Remember, R is the radius of the circle. So we have 3 squared, and then we have to multiply by, this h has to do with the, the height of the cone. So height of the cone is 8. So now I would go to my calculator here. Boop. And when I open it up, so I'm going to type in 1 divided by 3. It automatically puts in a fraction. Make sure you space over or click out of the fraction, or it'll keep typing in the bottom there. We don't want to um, enter pi, and there is no pi to click on here. We want to make sure we hit times. 3.14 times 3, and to do squared, I use this little XY button, and that gives me a little box. I just need to put a 2 in it. Again, make sure you, you click on your arrow, your cursor on your keyboard so you, um, to get out of the square, because if I stay there, it's going to keep typing. So if I type plus, I don't want it up there. So I have to hit over, or I have to actually use my cursor and click so that I can go times 8. So I just put the whole formula in all at once. And the really nice thing about the Alex calculator is I get to see it. And I can see that that is, in fact, what this looks like, except for I wrote pi, and they wrote 3.14 here. So I'm going to hit equals, and there is my answer. And if I scroll down to the bottom, 75.36 is exactly what they do. But we do need to make sure we select the correct unit. So we'll have to select centimeters cubed because each one of these, so the threes, there were centimeters times centimeters here because both threes had a centimeter. And then eight also had a centimeter. So I have centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. So we write that as centimeter cubed. It's just showing that we've multiplied three dimensions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. And I'm going to rewrite pi r squared h. And I didn't bother to write the, the b, the capital B for base. I just wrote pi r squared so that we can um, keep moving forward here. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Perfect, that's not in my way. So now I'm gonna go um, volume equals one third pi. I'm gonna go ahead and put 1.34. Now I need to know what radius is. Well, they give me the this 12. Well, this is a diameter, and they tell me that up here. It's a diameter. Um, and we've dealt with circles quite a bit in the last couple weeks. So we know a diameter 
is actually just two radii because a radii means it goes from the center of the circle to the edge, center of the circle to the edge. So I can just divide this by two, and this is what r is. This is my r, my radius. So radius squared times the height of the, the cone here is 10. And remember, this has meters and meters in it because six meters times six meters, and this has another one. So the end answer is going to have this meter cubed on it. So let's go ahead and go to our calculator here. And we have one divided by three, space over, times 3.14, times six, and then I'm gonna hit that little XY button, and then type two, space over. And by space over, I, I'm saying space over, but I mean like key over, hit the arrow to go over, 10. All right, equals, and there is my answer. So I'm gonna go 376.8, and make sure you select the meters cubed. It may warn you the first time. If it's warned you a bunch of times before this, though, it will start marking you wrong. But generally, it does give you a warning before it marks you wrong. It says, hey, you forgot to do this. You forgot to round. You forgot to select your unit. It will give you some clues. If you didn't use 3.14, it may warn you on that one, like, hey, you were supposed to use 3.14. Or if you were supposed to round it, in this case, we weren't but it also warn you on those ones. Generally, it does give you a lot of warnings. Alex actually tends to be a little bit nicer on stuff like that. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this out again. We'll go next, and we need our equation back here. So we have V equals one-third pi r squared h. Okay, so we know it's one-third times pi, but they want us to use 3.14. Now we need our r. Again, they gave us a diameter. They did it again. So we need to take our diameter and divide by two, and this is our r. So now we have three squared times the height of the prism, which again, they gave us up here and in the, I'm sorry, not prism, the cone is 11. That's what I get for doing too many of these videos all at once. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my calculator here. So I'm gonna have one divided by three. Whoops, it's not clicked in there. And then I'm gonna hit my over arrow times 3.14 times 3, I'm going to hit my XY button, and then 2 over arrow times 11 equals, all right, there's my answer, 103.62, and then make sure you select the, the meters cubed, because they're both meters, so it's meters cubed. So whenever you're doing volume, it's going to be whatever the unit is cubed. And so far with Alex, I have not seen them do it where they're mixing the units together and you have to pay attention. It's either going to be just the, the basic unit, the unit squared, or the unit cubed. So this is a length, this is an area, this is a volume. All right, check. Okay, clear. And one more time here. Okay, so we're going to have volume equals one-third pi r squared h. Okay, one-third times pi. All right, so they did in fact give us a radius this time, and we can see it's going from the center to the side. So I don't have to do any dividing, I can just plug it right in, and then the height of the cone is 10. And go straight to our calculator here and start calculating some stuff out. Let's click in the calculator, one third arrow for space over, times 3.14 times six. I'm gonna hit my little XY button so I can put my two in there. Um, and if for whatever reason you forget that, you can also just do 6 times 6. That would actually work out exactly the same. And then 10 equals. All right, so we get 3, 6, sorry, 7, 6, 0.8 yards cubed. And I did want to bring up, so Alex Calculator, if it's available, they let you type it in so that you can have 1 divided by 3 like this. So they show you the fraction. Most other calculators, don't do that. Um, if you type in one divided by three, which is what this means, one divided by three, then you're gonna get a decimal, which is you know 0 0.33333, it just repeats on forever. So it's a repeating decimal. Um, so you can always wait off, if you're not using the Alex calculator for whatever reason, wait off on the one third till the end. So what I mean is do all these other calculations first. Go 3.14 times six squared, times 10. Oops, I forgot to space over. 
times 10. All right, so I get 1,130.4. And now that I have this number, I can take this three, multiplying by one third is the same thing as dividing by three. So I get the exact same number. If I'm not using the Alex calculator, that might be a little bit easier. Um, also, most other calculators for the square, instead of saying x, y, they actually have an x with a two. You, most of the time, the other calculators I've seen, the x, y is actually reserved for numbers bigger than two. Because um, like my phone and I think my computer have x squared and x cubed on the calculator. You just click that button and you don't have to tell it it's a two. It already knows that it, you want it to square. Okay, so let's go ahead and click check. And we're good to go there.